What's up dudes and dudes of the year now my name is Sayushi and today we're going to be taking a break from our usual Fantasy Star series and doing a special video that's going to kind of be a beginner's tutorial. So I don't necessarily want to qualify this as a full on in depth tutorial. Most of all it's just that I want to share with you guys and gals a couple things that I wish I knew going into the game that I now know that I've got like over 30 hours into this game. It's seriously addicting. So uh, you can actually play this game on Japan servers right now. It's it's actually available for PC, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, PS4, uh, for consoles. As far as I know, all you gotta do for that is create a Japanese account on the console itself so that you can end up downloading the Japanese game file and then you can swap over to your North American or European uh, account and then you can just end up playing the game accordingly. But on PC, you're going to actually have the added benefit of having an English translator, uh, like an in English patch that players have been working on over years. Not everything is translated perfectly and there is still definitely a lot of stuff that just outright isn't translated, but I'll leave a link down in the description that tutorializes you on how you actually install the game through that method and stuff like that. It's very, very easy. The only thing that I would mention that could be difficult is, uh, and this will apply, I think, for console players as well, is setting up a Sega ID. So I'll put another link in the description that will take you to where you'll actually set up your Sega ID. It's all straightforward enough, but eventually you're going to end up coming to the point where you need to sign in a CAPTCHA to prove you're not a robot but you have to actually do it with Japanese text. Now, for those of you that aren't as computer savvy, uh, you can very easily just go to Google Translate and then you change it to Japanese. You use the pen tool and you literally just draw the characters that you see. It might take a couple times just because the characters in Japan uh, can end up being very slightly different and difficult uh, to understand if you don't know Japanese characters, but just keep at it and then you'll end up eventually creating yourself an account. Easy peasy. So, first and foremost, you're going to want to go to ship two when you're creating an account. That's pretty much where all of the English players are. Another thing I want to mention very briefly, I know I'm awkwardly editing this in because I forgot to mention it until the end of the video. This game is absolutely free. It's free to play. That's the biggest thing about it. There's cash shop in it for sure, and there is going to be some pay to win stuff, most of all with storage and XP boosters and junk. But the base game itself is tight, dude. You definitely want to pick this game up and be hyped about it. I need to say that it's free to play because I've seen too many of you guys and gals asking me in the comments how much the game costs, where can you end up buying it, and... I mean, in general, lots of people holding off on playing the Japanese version because they think that it's going to cost them and they want to wait until they can end up buying the North American version. It's free. And when you end up creating a character, we'll kind of skip past that because you can check out my first episode in my Fantasy Star game play or whatever. Uh, basically, you're going to pick the characters that you enjoy, you know, customize them like crazy because it's going to be very difficult for you to end up customizing any aspect of your character later on. Uh, when the game releases for North America, which it is uh, going to end up actually having a closed beta test Xbox exclusive tomorrow, so long as you end up signing up for it uh, through the Xbox Insider program or something like that, I, you know, I, that we'll talk about in tomorrow's video, which is going to end up being us just playing Fantasy Star with the beta itself. Um, but for the Japanese version, you know, you don't really, really want to get super duper invested into it, obviously, because it is coming out in North America 2020. Uh, it doesn't say that there's going to end up being European servers, but as far as I know, you're going to be able to use the same quick, easy method that I mentioned previously, uh, where you can end up just creating a North American account, downloading the game, sign into your European, and so on and so forth. For un people on PC, it's going to be very easy because this game is going to be available on Xbox One and the Windows Store. It apparently is coming to Steam and at further dates will end up coming out for PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch more than likely just because why wouldn't it? And this game is completely cross-platform. Uh, you can convert all your characters over to whatever version you want to play. It's it's awesome. It really is just a great game overall. But uh, again, this video is mostly supposed to be focusing on the tutorial stuff, so we're not necessarily going to do adventuring or combat or anything like that because I just want to kind of get my point across of what you should watch out for as you're going in. So when you're creating your character, your race is going to be... It's going to be important if you care about the meta for the late game because certain races will end up having certain defense or attack benefits over others. Uh, I just pick Cast, which is the Robo Dudes. Most of all, I just pick them because I think that they're cool, but they also have a lot of physical damage uh, as well. So uh, if I can end up looking at 
Let me look at a weapon right here just so I can take a quick peek at the stats. Uh, so right here, you're going to see there's HP, which is just your health points. PP, which is photon points. I, I think that's what it's called anyways. That's basically going to be your mana. So you'll generate the uh, PP points or whatever the heck you want to call it. You'll generate this by doing your normal basic attack. And then you can use your special attacks, which will end up draining this meter. Uh, I'll go into that a little bit later in the video. Uh, it's, it's fairly easy and to the point, honestly. The game already instructs you on all this stuff pretty well, except for each of the different stats themselves s attack is going to be like striking damage so that's just physical swords and stuff like that r attack is range t attack is tech that's going to be your magic classes uh dexterity s defense r defense t all, all that stuff dex i think is for crits if i'm not mistaken i'm not entirely sure uh but while you uh, while your race is going to end up being something that's a bit more permanent up over here uh this is going to end up being the lobby area by the way and uh, you can see in the top right that we're in uh, lobby 28 ultra hard. So all you gotta do is go over to this elevator and you can change your block, which is basically the lobby number. And you can change it to various other, uh, you know, lobbies so that you can end up seeing your friends and stuff like that. But anyways, come over here. You can talk to this dude and you'll be able to just change your class right there. Uh, the class levels are going to be individual. So you'll be able to get each individual class like from square one all the way up to I don't know if it's level 75, level 90 or something like that. Uh, my hunter right now is at level 30. Level 30 is the first cap of like the first level cap you'll run into. Uh, but eventually through a bunch of very easy uh, quests, you can end up actually getting past that cap. Uh, and then you're going to also notice that Hero, Phantom and Atoll or Atoll, I don't know. These are classes that are actually locked out because in order to end up unlocking these classes, you actually have to have the coinciding classes at level 75, as far as I know. Uh, so a successor class designed to fight multiple enemies at once can use three weapons of striking, ranged, and tech types in combat. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm pretty sure you gotta, where does it say? It? Yeah, okay, here it is. So. You have to clear uh, Coffee's Clan Order Hero Class Unlocking Trial. That's something that comes a lot later. Uh, it becomes available when any class reaches level 75. And once the client order is cleared, you will only need to do it once. So subsequent, uh, subsequent characters uh, will just need to turn in the order. So if you end up creating another character, I, I think the point is you won't have to do the quest over and over. I thought that you had to have more than just one character at level uh, 75, but I guess... I guess that's it. Well, either way, I'll deal with the hero character a little bit later. Uh, then there's going to end up being your class skills. So this can end up being very important as well. I know that it can feel a bit daunting, but it really it isn't as complicated as it seems. And I probably shouldn't be tackling this so early on in the video, but I just want to let you guys know that this is here. Uh, again, keeping those stats in mind, S attack boost is literally going to give you more striking damage. The more levels you have, the more SP you're going to have, which is skill points. They're going to be showing up right here at the top, right next to renaming the skill tree. Uh, you will be able to reset your skill trees uh, later on, but you need like a reset pass, which I'm assuming would be cash shop obviously I haven't really dealt with any of the cash shop stuff just because we're on Japanese servers right now so yeah uh, but the you also will be able to get a subclass so the thing is that the class abilities will actually work on all of your characters so long as you have them uh, accepted as a subclass which is something you'll have to unlock later but my point is that the meta of this game basically comes down to let's say I'm maining hunter Maybe there would be a skill in Rangers category. I, I'm just saying hypothetically, right? Maybe there would be a skill point for Ranger that I would want to use with my Hunter. So I would have to then level up my Ranger so that I could get that skill in its skill tree and then set Ranger as my subclass ability so that I could then end up uh, setting that as a ability that I could end up using on my Hunter, right? So... It's not, again, it's not as complex as it sounds. Uh, so another thing too that I want to point out is this guy right here, Affin, after you end up doing a bunch of the starting missions, you're going to have a bunch of quests with him. Do them right away because otherwise you're going to be locked out of a lot of content and his quests are extremely easy. Uh, any character that has this little icon on top of them means that they have contracts or client orders. That's what I'm, there you go. Uh, you can end up accepting 20 of them in total and as you end up completing client orders for specific NPCs, you'll end up building a relationship with them. 
So the more client quests that you end up doing for them eventually is going to end up netting you a bunch of different rewards. So you can see uh, up in the top left right here that he's slowly working towards giving me a gift. Yikes. Uh, but otherwise, how do you set techniques? Uh, what skills should I use? Learn any skill, equip uh, any rear unit, arm unit, leg unit, stuff like that. Like this guy is pretty much the tutorial character uh, that teaches you a lot of stuff that I skipped over because I was just so enveloped in the gameplay itself that I just wanted to go out adventuring, not realizing his quests were as easy as they were. Now the other thing too is that uh, I've noticed that leveling is like almost non-existent if you're just grinding enemies. So you're going to have to run around collecting client orders uh, and these will ultimately end up giving you lots and lots of uh, XP. So you can see even doing this one right here, let's turn it in. That gave us 20,000 XP, which was a little over a quarter uh, into our next level. Right now I'm at uh, level 30 at the moment that I'm recording this for you guys, but I've got lots of other videos already stocked up. So uh, consider this something off to the side from our Let's Play series rather than me just exploring the game and stuff like that. But my point is that that's pretty much how you're going to be getting a lot of your XP, right? Uh, so then right over here is going to end up being the camp ship. You can just run into this and very quickly choose to explore one of the different areas. Uh, as you can see, I've got pretty much every area unlocked. You're going to unlock the areas by doing different missions in those zones. So let me actually just show you right over here. Uh, that this Rebecca is going to end up being the character that gives you all of the main quests. Uh, and then this is Coffee. So this is the character that was mentioned over where we were changing our classes. Uh, she's pretty much the one where I think when you get to level 30, like she accesses a bunch more uh, client orders where you're going to unlock like uh, you can see like difficulty unlock so we can get to hard mode now uh, and then you end up learning the subclasses through her uh, level cap increase etc uh, etc et right but the thing is i didn't know for the longest time i probably could have unlocked hard mode like well beyond uh being level 30 and stuff like that right but i couldn't talk to her because i didn't complete any of Athens quests so complete his quest, dude. You gotta get at least a bunch of them done so that she actually starts talking to you because otherwise she just ignores you and it's really annoying. So anyways, moving on to the quest character and we'll talk about gear and fighting and stuff like that when we actually get into a dungeon. So there's gonna be main quests, story quests, uh, sub quests, and then there's also just the training zone. Uh, you can also change some of your settings for whether you want random people joining your party and junk like that. So main quests are just gonna be the big bulk of the game. You can just repeat these over and over again. There's uh, sometimes there'll be featured quests and bonus quests. These are special things that I just unlocked now. Uh, and very rarely you'll see an emergency quest when you see an emergency quest there's gonna be like red all over the like all over the hub and everything like that like it's it's a big event that the game wants you to know about there's gonna be a bunch of text on the top of your screen that's gonna be notifying you of it and emergency quests are really really cool because those are going to end up acting i guess basically like a raid boss so from what coffee explained to me i'm still kind of learning how the emergency quests work there's going to be three different sectors to an emergency so sector one is going to be just defeating enemies sector two is going to end up being a a boss of some kind leading up to sector three which is going to be the final boss of the event as players continuously grind out the event over and over again it's going to count towards getting to the next sector so players are going to have to just go ham on these missions over and over again and the better score and the better you end up doing in sectors one and two means that you're going to end up getting better loot in sector three yeah, and these bosses are spectacular. You do not want to miss them. If you see an emergency, take it because it's a lot of fun. So anyways, now that we're in the quest area, I can kind of show you, uh, you know, all the levels end up going up and there's a lot of information here that you definitely want to keep your eyes open for when you're doing all these quests. Uh, a couple things to note is that certain quests, like the sub quests more so act like tutorial quests where it'll have you doing specific obje objectives and kind of teaching you what each of those objectives are as you're going through the game which ultimately isn't that difficult basically the game is go in a dungeon kill every enemy do any of the random side quests that end up popping up and then beat the boss if you just rush the boss you're going to have a lower rating which means that you're going to get less of a reward which maybe will end up playing a part to play at the late game where you're probably trying to do dungeons as fast as possible but i mean the combat's just so tight that i just love going into areas and just losing myself for like half an hour at a time right 
So, uh, the subquests are not really the best example, but because they are a tutorial-ish area, this one right here, the rare ore mining, and near as I can tell, I can't do that alone because it requires me to go and like mash a button next to a, a mining device and I just can't, I, I can't do it fast enough. I don't know if I need like an auto controller or if it's probably just expect me to use multiple players. Uh, so there's time attack, riding quest, blah, 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 blah. We won't get into any of that stuff because main quests are going to be the bulk of it or at least my favorite part of it, which is the free field areas. So this is quite literally going to be throwing us into a world and the difference between this and just going on and uh, just a random expedition uh, when we end up going over here is that if we go in here, the events and even the boss is going to end up being very random. So you might not end up fighting the specific enemy that you were expecting kind of thing. Uh, but the main quests are going to end up being consistent. So for this one, for example, you can actually see a lot of information on this quest screen, which is very, very helpful for those client orders that I mentioned earlier, because a lot of them will have you go to specific areas to kill enemies. It might even say specific enemies that it wants you to kill and stuff like that. Uh, so this is where if it ever says Nibirius, you can see right here that the forest zone actually counts as planet Nibirius. Now, if we just go to the camp ship, it doesn't actually say that. It just says forest expedition, right? So you go in here so that you can end up seeing these extra minute details. On top of that, you can actually see that this little icon right here shows that we do in fact have a client order in the volcanic uh, caverns, which is Amducia, which I'm probably saying wrong, but whatever, who cares? Now, speaking of those enemies, you're going to end up seeing right here is going to end up being the boss, and then these are going to end up being the common enemies that you can come across. It's not gonna be showing you every enemy that you can end up coming across, just for the most part, the primary enemies, right? So you can, uh, again, keep that in mind when you're doing quests, and maybe it'll be like, oh, Nab Rappy, that's going to be this little penguin, the Fang Gulf, that's going to be this one, the Fang Banshee, I think that's the boss. Not exactly sure, uh, but there will be certain characters that the quest themselves won't actually show are in the area. So you kind of got to just learn that as you go, because sometimes the subquests will be very, uh, they won't be as informative as you would hope them to be. Like if it tells you to kill a rock ape or a rock something, whatever it's called, I don't know. There's like these weird ape dudes that show up in the forest as well. Yeah. On top of that, you can see the available items. These are going to end up being the super rare items, as far as I know anyways, that you can get from defeating the boss. I haven't had any of these drop, so I don't know whether or not that's 100% accurate, but I'm pretty sure that that is what that is what these are. So there's gonna be like rare drops that you can just get from the, the enemy quest and just defeating bosses and even random bosses out in the open world and stuff like that. But these are going to end up being the primaries, like you repeat this area over and over again just so you can end up getting these special items, right? So you can see the available items uh, are kind of the same for these first starting areas and then they slowly start changing and getting more and more complex as it goes on. Each of the bosses and enemy types get more complex. And the thing that I think that's so cool is every single one of these zones actually acts as a completely different area so you'll have to complete the forest exploration out of the main quest tab in order to unlock the volcanic in order to unlock the desert in order to unlock the tundra so on and so on and so forth uh, until it kind of gives you a li little bit more free reign of where you can end up going and let me tell you all these maps are very very unique the enemies that you come across like i'm really excited for you guys to see the future episodes in the let's play series because these zones are just absolutely awesome uh, i can't go to the level 60 zone just yet I'll obviously, but it looks scary. Uh, and then when you end up actually selecting the quest, you can see that I've actually unlocked hard mode now. So hard mode is going to end up having stronger versions of all the enemies. Uh, and you can also see that the available items completely change as well. So hard mode is going to be where you'll get much, much better gear as you end up going through the dungeon and stuff like that. And you can see I've already completed normal with that little crown there. I haven't done hard mode yet. So we will select this. And as we do a quick start, we can set whether it's an open party or whatever. We'll probably just run into random people, but we're not gonna hop into the quest just yet. I know that this video is probably going to be a little bit longer, but I, I wanna talk a little bit more about this hub area because there's gonna be a bunch of other characters up here that you can end up getting client orders from. Uh, but more importantly, if you end up going into this little elevator right here, this is gonna take you to the shop area. And this place is extremely important for a handful of reasons. Uh, 
uh, not only are there going to end up being even more characters that will be able to give you client orders as you get further in the game and complete certain quests and stuff like that uh, but you can see right over there is the cafe when you end up going to the cafe I mean it's it's just super duper confusing it basically unlocks fishing and mining on all of the maps and you'll be gathering all these resources to cook food to cook food items which will give you temporary buffs as far as i know but there's also going to end up being rings that you can craft which are really really complicated and weird because the rings will actually complement specific attack fo uh, photon arts that you'll have on your weapons which again we'll get into that a little bit further as we get to the like we'll we'll get to the weapons and the combat and stuff like that when we end up going into the dungeons uh themselves because first i want to show you that there's going to be all these npcs uh so over here is going to be the weapon shop the item techer the item techer is the person where you'll actually identify your items and this item lab right here uh, I haven't really messed with this too too much so don't quote me on everything exactly but this is the item grinder so you're going to use this NPC literally to level up your gear uh, old type weapons uh, as far as I know there's two types of weapons there's old type weapons and there's new type weapons new type weapons as far as I know there's an NPC around here that you can get subquests from uh, and you can end up getting a reward of actually grinding out and creating new type weapons right so certain weapons will end up having potential that you can unlock you can also grind ot attributes so you would be leveling up specific attributes on weapons and stuff like that uh also you can just grind up your normal gear and items and junk like that right so the thing is that what you're going to do in order to level up gear is literally feed it other gear so you can see right here that i can actually feed my sword these other items uh, and upon doing so the grind value is very very slowly going to increase not really any other stats have increased because i have to get this bar full before it ends up getting new stats but you can see that we actually only have uh, i'm assuming that this is a 10 percent success rate or maybe that's 10 percent that of it being able to fail i'm not exactly sure because it says very successful rate for some weird reason but you can use various items to end up increasing that percentage uh so that it ends up being less likely to fail because if it fails it can actually regress and can actually end up de-leveling as well so it's definitely a really big system to get into but not really something we need to talk about today because for the most part you only really need to mess with it with late game weapons and uniques there's also going to end up being the pet lab pets uh, as far as i know you can run into pets and get them as rare drops and stuff like that but pets are going to be specific to the uh like the summoner class even though you can still get pretty much everything for all classes on whatever character like i'm not getting hunter exclusive gear just because i'm playing on the hunter you know what i mean so over here is gonna be the disc shop uh attendant and our item shop attendant and the discs themselves these these are going to be extremely important to the game uh these photon arts as the game calls them are going to literally be your different attack moves so you'll find these just like crazy while you're out exploring the world and stuff uh and as you can see the ones that are lit up means that i can actually use them right now whereas the ones that are dark are ones that i either already have or just i can't use yet uh because the s attack required or the stats required you can see right here i currently have over here so sometimes you won't have the right stats for them but my point is that these you're going to pretty much want to consume all of them at all times and a lot of them are going to end up giving you various different abilities that you can associate to your weapons but again we'll get into that a little bit later when we go to the combat uh there's a costume store and stuff like that uh, over there is the casino where there's even more quests that you can end up doing as well as just gambling but we're not going to go in there just because i don't want this video to end up getting demonetized or taken down <laughs> just because it can happen uh and then i think that's pretty much it as far as the main hub area at least the most important things oh i guess uh i guess i should also mention that this right here this is going to end up being kind of the events uh, station so sometimes you'll see campaign reward receipt and you'll be able to claim items uh and for your specific characters and junk like that uh there's also going to be the player shops gathering crafting and blah 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 Th this is a really important station that you're going to mess with same with this one right here which is for your bank and your storage but now that we've actually accepted the quest from rebecca we should be able to just go into our camp ship and just chill here 
and I wish that we could just go and chill in this area at all times, but you have to have an active quest in order to end up entering here. The reason I like it is just because literally everything is just chilling here. Also, that thing that's low battery is my mag, which we'll talk about in a moment. So while you're in this area, you can actually just accept new quests right here at this station. Uh, and then there's going to end up being, what is this? The gathering terminal is not used right now. Okay, so that's something to do with the gathering, which I haven't messed with too much. Here's our storage. Here's a little sh item shop, so you can literally just buy your healing items and stuff like that. You pretty much want to have your healing items fully stocked at all times, because you can only carry 10 of each healing item at a time on your hotbar. So it pays to be prepared. You may as well just have all of them at all times. Uh, you can also buy items to put into storage, sell items from your storage. So usually what we'll do, uh, what a lot of players will do is I, I just put pretty much everything in storage because inventory management is a really big problem with this game because as far as I know, there is a cash shop equivalent to end up giving you more storage or more inventory. I don't know if that's going to be on the North American, but let's just say, for example, I put all these swords into storage just because I'm trying to get them out of my inventory so that I can end up picking up more items while I'm on my quest. And then I just kind of cycle through all of this, just, you know, slowly getting rid of more and more and more of this junk uh, as we end up getting all this gear and then I just sell it all it's telling me some of that stuff is actually uh red star tier so this is going to end up being the different rarities right here so it goes from blue to green red star and then there's even further than that but it doesn't show us until way later uh any gear that is going to end up having a red star or even an item that has red star is going to pop up on your screen as a rare drop so you definitely got you gotta watch out for that if you ever see that you gotta scrounge around the map trying to grab it usually it'll end up being right beside you there is a buyback as well and then right over here these are temporary items that you can use per quest so you can use a shifted drink to end up erasing your offensive capabilities but it's going to cost you some money let's grab one why not and then after that we can just continue on so this is going to throw us into the actual uh zone itself we can teleport to where more players are or we can just go to the start point we'll just go to where more players are because it doesn't really matter i like usually starting uh at the beginning just because i like going through the dungeon myself especially because this is my first time doing hard mode so I could potentially end up getting my butt absolutely kicked. Uh, but now we can talk about the combat itself and everything. The combat is extremely simple and to the point. This guy is very, very overpowered. It makes sense. We are in hard mode, right? Uh, but literally as you're attacking enemies, uh, well, at least as Hunter anyways, most of the characters are going to end up operating pretty much the exact same. You might not notice it, but I'm actually timing my attacks. So as we're doing these attacks, I can literally just hold the button. And my character will just keep attacking, right? I play with controller. You can play with the keyboard just as well. But as we attack, you wait a little bit. And then you see that little bubble that goes around our character. As soon as it's red, then you're going to end up doing a crit. So you definitely want to time it so that you can end up doing crit, crit, crit over and over just for maximum damage output, right? Another thing too is you notice that the little gold that was standing right here two seconds ago, I picked that up. You can actually turn that on in your options. So the option settings is going to end up being right here. Go in here and mess around with stuff because there is a lot of things you can customize, including the game automatically has blur on, which is disgusting. So when our character is moving, there's a motion blur to it. So you got to turn that off. You can change uh, what automatically gets picked up. So you can set it up so that your character will automatically pick up rare items, automatically pick up money, junk like that, right? This is going to end up being the gathering stuff. So this is ore, this is fishing, and the fishing and ore is literally just go up to it, press the button, use the harvesting tool, which as of right now, I, I just have the basic one, which is unlimited. There we've got some ore. Keep in mind that it does take up an extra inventory uh, spot. And then for the fishing, it's literally the same thing, but you'll see that there's the same thing as getting a crit with damage, but for fishing, so you gotta kind of time your fishing. You can just spam through your fishing as well, which is perfectly fine, but it doesn't really matter too, too much. Uh, you'll see in the top right that a combo down meter is counting down. As you'll kill certain enemies or just kill lots of enemies, you'll end up getting more and more towards your uh, different combo meters, which will give you more and more buffs throughout that mission. These are going to be temporary and exclusive to the mission that you're doing itself. So quite literally, you are rewarded for the more enemies that you end up fighting because you're going to end up getting more and more 
uh, towards that, which can end up netting you better rare drops, uh, can end up giving you just uh, more money. Uh, you know, there's lots and lots of little boosts that'll end up happening. I also noticed that uh, it did spit us out right by the boss, so I gotta keep that in mind. You can at first equip three different weapons at a time and cycle between them. Later on, you can unlock up to six. So this is going to end up just being the basic axe or great sword. This pretty much just counts as a great sword, even though it's an axe. This is going to end up being the whip blades. And there's all sorts of different weapons that you can end up using throughout all the different characters. As the hunter, you kind of are locked to a specific few. As a ranger, you're locked to mostly ranged weapons, including a grenade launcher and stuff like that. But certain items that are like ultra rares and junk, like these pistols, for example, are going to be accessible for all classes. So certain weapons will end up just completely negating that, right? But as you can see, there's six different abilities, right? How do I end up using all six different abilities? Well, I've got one, two, three. And if I hold left trigger, I don't know what it is on mouse keyboard, probably shift or something. Then suddenly I've got one, two, this is a long combo, bear with me, and then three. So you can kind of set up all of these different abilities. So when you end up going to equip your weapons, you can see you've got your normal attack and then you can set up various other techniques. And these are going to end up being those photon arts that I mentioned that you are quite literally going to unlock as you're playing through the game. Yeah. So really, really cool that it's got all this stuff. You can see for the gun, I barely, like, I, I don't use the gun enough, so I literally have, like, no photon arts for it, right? Uh, but it's important to keep that in mind just as you're going further into the game because the photon arts are going to be very, very important. They're going to end up being in this CD tab, right? So you use them if you've got them. Uh, but again, as you're going out and exploring, you're going to actually want to send a lot of this stuff to storage just so that you don't have to deal with a full inventory because you can see I've got 28 out of 50 uh, for my inventory slots right now. This is just a housing item, so I can throw that in. Uh, a lot of a lot of these items will just clog up your inventory repeatedly like it, you know red meat and marbled meat just drop from enemies continuously so pretty much never bother depositing that because otherwise you're just going to end up wasting time there's going to be a half doll is an item that will self res yourself while the moon moon orb or something i don't think i have one right now maybe i do moon atomizer that's it this is an item that you can literally use and then in an aoe around you it'll res like other players uh, there's also going to end up being the same uh thing true to the item that ends up i think it's the soul atomizer that one actually gets rid of status effects and again it'll do an aoe so it'll cure everyone's status effect around you not just your own keep in mind that red for some weird reason means increased stats while blue means lesser I know it's weird. Later on, I think around level 30, I think you have to be level 30, you'll end up getting access to the mag. So the mag, as you can see, is actually at 0%. As we're feeding this thing, it's going to end up gaining different stat boosts, but on top of it, it's going to end up leveling up further and further along. So we can give it weapons uh, and other various items just as we're out and about. So I can give it uh, Monomite so that it ends up giving it more striking damage and striking defense. But considering I'm a hunter and I don't really have that good defense, I might want to end up leveling up a different stat. But now that it's at 99%, I can't feed it anymore. And they'll end up giving you different abilities further on. Like sometimes they can heal you. Uh, sometimes they'll just cause damage to enemies. It all depends on how you level it up. I don't know too, too much about it just because I haven't really messed with it too much and I'm not too concerned about it because I think you can end up buying it off of other characters. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but anyways, this is going to be for the boss room. So there's always going to be a heal station right here. And then there's going to end up being the teleporter. If you ever are not confident in a quest, uh, you can always end up using, where is it? Telepipe, that's it. So you can plop one of these down and then you can just warp back to the camp ship and then you can just cancel the quest. Uh, certain quests will actually like, even though you're playing uh, single player or with random people, it depends. Uh, you will actually be able to just resurrect by going back to the camp ship, and then you're going to have to fight your way back to your other location. But all the quest objectives that you completed up to that point, like there doesn't seem to be any penalty for death outside of certain quests. If you die, that's it. It's just game over, especially in emergency quests. Let's just go for it just because there's not really that much to it. Certain abilities, I guess I should mention, will actually be chargeable. So this spin, for example, I can actually charge it. 
and it'll end up doing more damage. If you do enough damage to a certain weak point on a boss or on a specific enemy, uh, you can end up knocking them down or whatever. Uh, that ability right there, you saw me get off of the ground really quick. You got to time that perfectly, uh, but it is an ability that you will be able to get, I think, with every character. And the other big thing that you see me keep doing with this guy is the quick dodge. So there's going to be a block for the hunter's abilities as well, uh, but I don't really use it just because I love that quick step. You can actually level up the uh, invulnerability frames while you're using that, and you can use that to literally step through a lot of the different attacks that bosses and enemies are going to end up doing and stuff. I just like using it to end up covering ground, uh, and you can see we actually did that relatively unscathed, like geez louise. Careful, because when the boss falls over, he can actually damage you. <laughs> so this is going to end up being a boss orb, or crystal, or whatever. This is really important, because as you get further and further in the game, that boss that we just fought, it can just randomly spawn out in the world while you're just doing a normal dungeon. Which is the thing that is so hype about this game, because sometimes there'll just be like so much flying at you. You know, you can have literal bosses from different dungeons show up in other areas and end up causing trouble for you. It's really, really cool and really gratifying. And then you shatter this and then there's all the drops. There's a rare drop example as well. Perfect. I'm so glad that we actually got that on camera. Uh, so these are going to just be a bunch of normal items. Uh, purple is armor, the yellow is going to be weapons. You can see right here we actually have some candy, which is related to feeding pets. And then right here, this is going to be special weapon, question mark, because this one is actually unidentified. Uh, it does show a little sword icon, so I'm wondering whether or not that is uh, just showing that it's a weapon, period, or showing that it's a weapon for our character, because that's the thing that can end up being quite disappointing, is... Um, you, because you can get drops for all the era classes, you might not necessarily get a weapon that's any good for you. But that was my first hard weapon drop, so that's cool. Uh, as you saw when we completed the quest, we only got an A rank. That's because I literally skipped to the end without doing many of the side objectives. Uh, and then sometimes you'll want to go to arc missions over here and you receive all rewards. So this is literally going to be related to a lot of the daily quests that you'll just happen to be completing while you're fighting enemies and stuff like that. Because dailies are literally just going to pop up as passive quests that you can see from this menu right here like you can see that we've actually got daily missions so complete a daily order generate a gathering fever play a game in the casino complete all daily missions you'll get various items and various benefits from doing all of that uh but most of all you get like a crap ton of xp as you can see we're getting like thirty thousand and stuff like that it's just really really good but Let's leave on a high note. Let's go and identify this sword and see if it's actually something for my class, let alone I hope that it's actually better than this axe. So if we go to identify item, yeah, it actually is a great sword. Wow. So while we were in the dungeon, uh, you actually saw that this little great sword icon was beside it, which means that this is in fact going to end up being a great sword. It's a nice way that you can get a sneak peek of what the weapon is going to be and what class it's going to be is based on the little tiny icons and you'll learn those a little bit further later. Uh, but anyways, you can end up having desired attributes as well, which is really cool. So let's take, uh, let's take lights just because it's cool. I don't know. And then we'll take lucky rise, which will end up giving us uh, better rare drops because Masetta fever is just more money. A sword based on older technology, sharp enough to slash enemies apart. And it's got a lot of attack. Oh my goodness gracious. That is absolutely awesome. I think I actually just found a better weapon because the thing is, like I said, this axe counts as a sword, right? So if I equip this, I can literally use all of the same abilities that I had with the axe. Uh, well, you know, I, I can use all the photon arts is what I'm saying. That's actually really, really dope. It actually looks cool too. It's not just a generic energy sword. It's just a sword from like Final Fantasy or something. On top of all of that, guys, this game is free. That's the craziest thing about this game, okay? Going into it, you gotta know this is a free to play game. That's why it's got all the cash shop stuff. And for a free game, this is probably one of the best free to play games I've ever played. I played it a long, long time ago, but obviously when I first started playing this game, there wasn't much of an English translation. And if you're going into this game and you're just playing on console, obviously everything's in Japanese, which can end up being extremely confusing. And that's why I played it for a while and then I stopped. But since I've come back to it, 
This game is just so good, dude. It's so addicting. It's so fun. The combat of the different characters can end up being really good because there's also this kind of third person aiming, which is highly recommended with mouse and keyboard if you're playing a gun character because it's essentially just giving you free aim for a third person shooter instead of this where we're actually locking onto enemies and stuff because there is actually a button that I don't use very often, but you can lock onto your opponent so that the camera stays focused on like a boss enemy and stuff like that. But sometimes it can mess with your combos, so I don't really do it too much. Anyways, I hope I covered everything. If I didn't, be sure to leave it in the comments to let everybody know what's up. Uh, I think I covered pretty much everything. And again, this game is going to be coming to North America, so if you want to wait, you can. That said, I'm just loving this game right now. I don't care if I'm going to end up losing this character and all of my progress when it goes to the North American servers because the way I see it, not only am I gaining a lot of experience so that I can get through the North American servers a lot faster and understand how the game actually plays, but as I get more experience with it, I wanna see the differences. I wanna see how different the North American version is going to be from the Japanese version. Most of all, I'm hoping that we have a couple different uh, graphical updates and then some stuff to kind of declutter the, uh, uh, some stuff to declutter the HUD because it can end up being a bit daunting at times. I mean, hell, it's really, really daunting even to me with all the experience that I have with this game, with all of the different NPCs and stuff like that. But anyways, now I'm rambling. Thanks for watching. Smash like, sub for more, buy the merch you want to support the channel. Otherwise, have yourselves a great day and be excited for this game because it's free and it is coming, okay? It's coming 2020, so... Oh, I just love this game. Sign on and stay up, gamers.